This is Poppy and Rye, Chapter 19. Chapter 19 is called Poppy and Rye. Poppy and Rye gazed at one another by the light of the firefly flashes. He was quite sure he was looking at the most beautiful whiskers and pink nose he had ever seen upon any mouse with whom he had been acquainted. Poppy was sure Rye's face, covered as it was with delicate orange fur, was extraordinarily noble. What's more, he had altogether splendid ears and a small notch in the right ear only added character. What? Rye said in a choked whisper. What are you doing here? I came to see if you are right. But why? Because you, you dance beautifully, Poppy replied, though it made her whiskers tremble to say it. Thank you. And you dance as if, as if there were moonbeams in your toes. And Rye? What? I did love Ragweed, Poppy said. I'll never pretend I didn't, but he's gone. Rye hung his head. I know. And Rye, you need to know, I never danced with him. Rye looked up. His whiskers shook. Poppy, are you the most kind or most unselfish of mice? He whispered. In fact, you are altogether splendid. For a moment, neither spoke. Then Poppy said, Rye, why did you come here? I wanted to do something about the beavers, to get rid of them. Somehow, except I didn't have a plan. The truth is, Poppy, I wanted to prove myself to you. They caught me before I could do anything. Mr. Kanad told me that you were being held captive, Poppy said. He said if your family didn't move, he would keep you here forever. Forever, Rye repeated dramatically. But Poppy, it will have been worth it. Why? Because you came. But don't you want to get out? Poppy asked. I'd like to, but I think I've made things much worse. Poppy reached her paw through the bars and touched Rye's shoulder. That you even tried seems brave to me, she said. Do you really think so? Yes, just maybe well too bold. Rye took hold of Poppy's paw, which was resting on his shoulder, and kissed it. What you said means more, more than a life supply of sunflower seeds, he murmured. They looked at each other. Then Rye said, how did you get in here? There's a hole in the roof. I crawled down a vine. You are amazing, he said. Poppy blushed with pleasure. Rye became alarmed. But how are you going to get out, he asked. Poppy was about to say the same way, but even as she had thought, she realized it would be impossible for her to use the vine. It was dangling too high over the beavers for her to reach. I'm not sure. Rye said, I swam in through an underwater tunnel. The way that the beavers do, it's not too bad. You could go out that way. Oh, I don't swim very well. Oh, don't worry. I'll think of something. Neither mouse spoke. Instead, they looked at one another by the glow of fireflies. Rye, Poppy said, suddenly becoming more brushed as she felt the urgency to leave. Have you tried truing through the bars? They're too tough. Poppy tried for herself and she gave up quickly. I see what you mean. I'm afraid, Rye said. I really am going to stay here forever. I suppose I'll die of old age and regret. Rye, what? Please, I know the bars are tough, but keep chewing on them. I'll find a way back to you and your family. They need to know that you're all right. And maybe if I get a longer vine, one that reaches the ground, we could get out that way. Do, do you think so? Maybe. She started to back away. Rye clinging to the twig bars called Poppy. What? I'm deeply moved that you came, but maybe you shouldn't return. I don't want you to risk your life for me. But Rye, she said, taking a few more steps towards the cage. What? I would, I would like to dance again. Oh, Poppy, Rye crawled out, cried out. So would I, with you. Shh. Poppy cautioned as she backed away. Unable to take her eyes from Rye, she stumbled over a sleeping beaver's tail. She stood still. Rye, looking on, was horrified. For a long moment, they dared not to move. Finally, the beaver rolled away and settled down, never having awakened. Poppy crept over to the far wall. There was all muddy. By pressing up against the wall, she was able to skirt around a large sleeping beaver and come around the edge of the water gate. 
Once there, she gazed into the murky water apprehensively and then looked around to see if there was any way to get up to the vine. It was impossible. She had no choice. Reluctantly, she turned back to the water. The prospect of swimming caused her so much dread. She felt compelled to give herself a reassuring hug. Take a deep breath, she jumped, hitting the water with a splash. Across the lodge, Mr. Kinnad sat up and looked around. He had heard something. Taking a few sniffs, he detected a vague and unusual smell. He peered about but saw nothing except bulky beaver sleeping. All seemed perfectly normal. And yet, what was it that he had heard? He sniffed again. That time he detected a faint smell of mouse. Could that mouse have escaped? Better safe than sorry, Mr. Knad allowed and got up. Approaching Rye's cage, he peered through the gloom. At first he couldn't see Rye, but listening intently, he heard the sound of chewing. He crept closer to the cage. Rye was at the back of the cage, gnawing on the bar. Mr. Knad broke into a toothy smile. Well, bless my teeth and smooth my tail, he snorted. You trying to be a beaver? Rye, taken by surprise, looked up. Don't think you should try chewing your way out, pal, Mr. Kanad said. We need you to stay. Glowering, Rye said nothing. Just back away from those bars, pal. You don't want to cross over the line and force my paw. If I do something bad, it'll be your own fault. Rye stepped away. Way to go, pal. Now look, Mr. Kanad went on to say. I think I'll catch my Z's from here, for the next few days anyway. Don't want to lock the barred door if the horses are gone. Mr. Kanad was about to settle himself when he recalled the noise that had awoken him. If this mouse was here, what was that sound? Now that he thought about it, could it have been a splash? He sat up and counted his beavers, all present and accounted for. He did an inspection around the cage area. In the mud were Poppy's prints. You've had a visitor, the beaver suddenly exclaimed. Haven't you? Leave me alone, Rye cried. Never mind, Mr. Knad said. One picture is worth a thousand words. One of your pals was here. The beaver scrutinized the lodge intently. By a firefly flash, he caught sight of a vine dangling from the lodge roof. Mr. Knad grunted the vent hole. He lumbered across the lodge floor and ripped the vine down. Better plaster some mud over that hole, he thought. I can always make some other holes and hide them. Don't want any mice in the ointment.